As I gazed upon the vastness of Midgar's expressway in Final Fantasy VII Remake, I was struck by the boundless potential for what lay ahead. The game ignited a sense of yearning within me, unlike anything I had experienced before. With a world brimming with iconic moments awaiting modern reinterpretations, I found myself eagerly anticipating the twists and turns that this diverging path would unveil. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a realization of my wildest dreams, blending nostalgia with fresh perspectives in a sometimes chaotic, yet captivating manner. The action-packed and strategic RPG combat in Remake has been revitalized with fresh mechanics and new party members. The revamped overworld, now split into sprawling open regions with optional activities, breathes new life into familiar places. It's truly magical to experience all of this with beloved characters, whose personal stories now shine with even greater grandeur. While Rebirth's ambitious attempt to create a new timeline for Final Fantasy VII is a mix of sublime moments and overly convoluted plot points, the Oh good, you're up. Perfect time. I need someone to keep me company while I check out the park. This place is actually kind of lame when you're on your own. Try the others? Aerith and Tifa went on the Skywheel together, just the two of them. Talk about rude, leaving the new girl behind. I forgot you were the new girl. Sure don't act like it. It's my superpower. I slide in, buddy up, and then yoink! Come on, let's talk more what? The overall journey is undeniably amazing. Despite some execution hiccups, spending over 80 hours on the main story and side content leaves me eagerly awaiting the next chapter in this rebuilt Final Fantasy VII world. The vastness of the journey truly sets it apart, with the grasslands being just the beginning of the breathtaking rebirth world. The sight of endless horizons and towering mountain ranges left me in awe, as the once simple graphics of Final Fantasy VII were transformed into a stunning masterpiece. Aerith's moment of wonder at the beauty of nature, contrasted with Red the Thirteenth's reminder of its decay sets the stage for the theme of environmental preservation that runs throughout the story. What? This planet is no worth way. fighting for, a sentiment that resonated with me as I delved into each region, aiding its inhabitants in their struggles, yeah, well, both in the main quest that. and numerous side missions. However, the sense of awe was quickly accompanied by a tinge of intimidation as I opened up the world map, fully realizing the sheer magnitude of rebirth. It became apparent that this game had fully embraced the modern open-world design conventions, which only added to the excitement. Coming. To my surprise, the nerdy researcher boy, Chadley, made a triumphant return, taking on a much larger role this time around. He acted as a liaison, guiding me through the optional activities, all in the name of advancing his scientific research. One of his tasks involved activating towers scattered across each region, which in turn marked various tasks on my map. While this may sound like a familiar trope, Rebirth managed to rise above the negative associations typically attached to such tasks. As I delved deeper into the activities within each zone, I found myself becoming increasingly engrossed in the game. It was no longer just a mundane checklist of chores, it had transformed into a captivating journey, filled with countless icons waiting to be conquered. The context surrounding these activities breathed new life into the game, making it an experience that went beyond mere completion. Each task held its own significance, and I was determined to clear every single icon from the map. Rebirth had successfully turned what could have been a monotonous routine into an exciting adventure. There's a certain allure in simply venturing into every nook and cranny of these areas, just to witness 
how they've managed to cling onto existence despite the destructive impact of the unrelenting rel. Ions on Mako energy. As I scale a cliff in Junin, en route to a secondary objective, I'm treated to a mesmerizing yet tainted sight. The sunset casts a warm, orange glow upon the desolate landscape, while the imposing presence of the city's colossal cannon looms in the distance. The stark contrast between Costa del Sol's vibrant beachfront and the barren wasteland of Coral is a direct result of the insatiable energy demands of the iconic gold saucer. Exploring in rebirth evokes a similar sensation to the one I experienced while playing Xenoblade Chronicles 3, where the vastness and grandeur of their respective worlds compelled me to uncover every hidden gem they had to offer. These inspiring sights serve as their own little rewards, reminding me of the wonders that await at every turn. Exploring new areas in Rebirth introduces fresh ways to navigate with your trusty Chocobo. From bouncing off launch pad mushrooms in Gongaga's jungle to chaining boost pads in Cosmo Canyon, the mechanics start off charming, but can become a bit tiresome. Climbing cliff sides and swinging across gaps with a grappling hook, uncharted style, adds a sense of adventure. Even if the movements aren't as smooth as they could be, every activity, whether it's hunting down life springs, battling tough enemies, or searching for proto elix contributes to the overall gameplay experience. Life springs can lead you to divine intel locations for easier summons battles or reveal hidden side quest objectives. While some tasks may not be the most thrilling like treasure hunting with your chocobo or timing based inputs for summon shrines, the rewards make them worth the effort. By the grace of the goddess, as she has set me free, even now, so too shall she guide my place. Side missions are abundant on every community notice board in major towns, offering a deeper insight into Rebirth's reimagined open world. Each side quest is linked to a specific party member, allowing you to uncover hidden facets of their character and strengthen your bond with them. These quests are not just simple fetch tasks, they involve multiple objectives that span across different regions, promoting exploration and storytelling. They add depth to the human element of Final Fantasy VII, with some later quests providing crucial context to fully grasp the world and its supporting characters. No matter which tasks you choose to tackle, you'll earn XP for your party level, a unique progression system that unlocks access to folios. Folios function similarly to Final Fantasy X's Sphere Grid, where you use skill points to unlock new perks and abilities for each character. The standout feature in Folios is the introduction of synergy abilities, powerful partner attacks that deal significant damage and offer bonuses like extending stagger windows, filling the limit break bar, or temporarily eliminating all MP costs. Additionally, you'll gain access to synergy skills that enhance combat flexibility such as launching Typha into the air with Cloud to reach flying enemies or having Barret absorb damage for Aerith. Synergies are just one more tool in the arsenal that complements the complex combat system in Remake. Rather than overwhelming the existing system, they fill in gaps and reward you for using ATB bars, creating a more satisfying combat experience. The revamped pressure and stagger systems once again immerse you in the intricacies of combat, as defeating bosses and formidable enemies requires more than mindless button mashing. Similar to the remake, utilizing the accessibility uncovers ways to exploit enemy weaknesses beyond their elemental susceptibilities if they even possess any. This demands both strategic foresight to time your offensive onslaught perfectly 
and the necessary skill to execute it flawlessly. When everything aligns and you unleash limit breaks, powerful weapon techniques, and cinematic synergy abilities against a staggered adversary, the satisfaction is undeniable. It's not just the impact of each strike that resonates, but also the gratification of orchestrating it all amidst the relentless pressure of aggressive and occasionally merciless foes. In Remake, each character showcases a unique fighting style, with Cloud, Typha, Barret, and Aerith retaining their original functions. Rebirth introduces new enemies and mechanics, challenging you to maximize your party's potential. Yuffie, reminiscent of her intergrade DLC appearance, excels with ninjutsu, clones for amplified impact, and boasts unparalleled mobility. With a full party to support her, she emerges as the most dynamic member. Red the 13th, now playable, transforms defense into offense with vengeance stance, delivering swift combos and devastating Stardust Ray attacks. Whether you're strategizing in the heat of battle or orchestrating your team's moves, the constant variety in gameplay keeps you engaged as the field general. The complexity of the interconnected combat systems may seem daunting at first, but the satisfaction of mastering them and utilizing them effectively in battle is truly gratifying. A significant part of this depth comes from the materia system allowing players to tailor each party member's abilities with magic spells, stat enhancements, and passive skills. Despite its familiarity, the system remains as clever as ever, offering a high degree of adaptability that significantly impacts gameplay. Coupled with the strategic synergies found in folios, a wide array of weapon skills acquired on the journey, and formidable summons that can shift the course of a battle. Rebirth's combat system presents a wealth of options without making players overly dominant in crucial moments. Encountering tough foes can be a real challenge, even if you're armed with all the right skills. Bosses really make you earn your victory by throwing everything they've got at you. The effort you put in is what makes the battle so satisfying. You have to balance defending against their attacks, building up your ATB, and exploiting their weaknesses. But sometimes, it feels like the design of these enemies goes against the combat system itself. They move so fast that even the lock-on system struggles to keep up, leading to frustrating moments of being knocked around or caught in relentless combos. It's irritating when an attack interrupts your spellcasting and wastes your ATB. Despite these setbacks, the sense of accomplishment when you finally overcome these challenges in Rebirth is truly exhilarating. Rebirth's overarching narrative is both heart-trenching and captivating, but it takes some time to truly unfold. Beginning with a powerful flashback in Nibelheim, the story then meanders through various open regions, following events reminiscent of the original 1997 game. However, by front-loading these diversions, the main objective of Cloud and his companions can become muddled. From Junin to Costa del Sol, players will find themselves engrossed in minigums more than anything else, with the pinnacle being the gold saucer. While these activities are enjoyable, a bit of moderation could have maintained focus on the most important aspects of the story. It may appear to be nitpicking, but it holds particularly true when it comes to slow-paced crate-moving puzzles, stealth sections required to unlock a region's Chocobo, or the box-throwing micro-games featuring Kate Sith in later chapters. However, these are ultimately minor inconveniences in an otherwise fantastic reimagining of Final Fantasy VII's story. If anything, the more elaborate minigums perfectly capture the inherent goofiness of the PS1 classic, injecting a lively spirit into the adventure while remaining faithful to its original identity. Rebirth has managed to strike a perfect balance, which is truly impressive considering the constant presence of darkness and sorrow in Final Fantasy VII. The very existence of the planet is at stake. Shinra's destructive nature looms, 
and Sephiroth's calamitous ambitions threaten everything. Cloud himself is a shattered man, an unreliable narrator, and a complex protagonist. Thanks to the incredible advancements in technology, his subtle yet revealing mannerisms speak volumes, just as much as his words did in the original script. Each member of the party gets their chance to shine in this chapter of Final Fantasy VII, and with the help of stunning cinematic techniques and outstanding voice performances, their struggle between hope and despair is showcased brilliantly. Barrett's backstory was already unforgettable, but now, with the powerful and emotional voice acting by John Eric Bentley and the impressive graphics of today's hardware, his challenges and the painful resolutions that await him feel even more authentic. These modern qualities, combined with a reimagined script, also add depth to Red 13, making him a more well-rounded character. Aerith steps up as an emotional guide, deepening her bond with Typha amidst cloud struggles. While Rebirth may lean into melodrama and cheesiness, it's all part of its appeal. Despite the exaggerated displays of friendship and environmental themes, there are authentic messages about personal growth. This unique storytelling approach sets Rebirth apart from its peers, resonating with audiences on a deeper level. The idea of revamping Final Fantasy VII's narrative for a new era revolves around challenging the notion of predetermined destiny, a theme that becomes more apparent towards the climax of the remake as different timelines intersect. It took some time for me to warm up to this concept, and while the mechanics of Fate and Rebirth remain complex, it's a direction I'm eager to explore. However, despite the potential for this fresh storyline to be just as impactful as the original, I must admit that Rebirth falls short in its execution. Without giving away any spoilers, the events leading up to its conclusion and the aftermath are presented in a confusing and vague manner, diminishing their emotional impact. It seems like Rebirth tries to juggle too many elements without the necessary cohesion to tie it all together. While cryptic messages and subtle symbolism can enhance a story, there are moments when clarity is essential. And unfortunately, Rebirth fails to deliver when it matters most. The unexpected twist at the end may leave you scratching your head, but amidst the confusion, the additional scenes in the finale deliver powerful messages about coping with loss, moving on, and coming to terms with mortality. Sometimes, it's about finding a cause worth fighting for. These subtle moments prompt a unique introspection that the original version lacked. Making sense of our existence in a world filled with sorrow is a messy and intricate journey, riddled with paradoxes, and Rebirth captures this complexity perfectly. Despite the mixed bag of the new direction these remakes are taking, Final Fantasy VII's narrative still serves as a poignant reflection of our reality. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth takes the foundation laid by Remake and elevates it to new heights, delivering an exceptional action RPG experience filled with challenges and depth. After spending 82 hours completing the main story and various side quests, it's clear that there is still so much left to explore in this expansive world. The game is brimming with minigums, side quests, and other engaging activities that breathe life into familiar locations, offering a fresh perspective on the beloved world of Final Fantasy VII. Despite stumbling in its execution of the ending, Rebirth manages to capture the essence of what made the original game so memorable, sparking moments of reflection and nostalgia along the way. While it may not be without its flaws, Rebirth remains a captivating and impactful reimagining of a classic tale. And that's a wrap. Folks, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more awesome content. Ring the bell to stay updated with our latest uploads. Got any thoughts or questions? Drop me a comment below. We love hearing from you. Check out my other videos for more great content. And remember, stay curious, keep exploring, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care and keep shining. Hold on a sec.
I am not finished yet. Follow me on social media Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube obviously. Do it now. Come on do it. Thank you for watching. And a huge shout out to our subscribers and Patreon supporters for making this possible. You're the real MVPs. Signing off peace out.